Phillips, a leading doctor in this country and the first female uh, head of the Australian Medical Association, television host Layla McKinnon, uh, who is also an accomplished journalist and mother of two. Thank you for joining us. I want to talk to you both about health and fitness trends. And Layla, so yoga, personal training? Well, I don't really like it. If I was yoga, be anything. <laughs> I'd rather read a book. <laughs> you don't like exercise at all. Not no. really, no. I, um, I go because I like being strong. So sometimes I'll go for a run, but it's a walk run, and I listen to really loud hip-hop and dance music. You and like who? Who do you listen to? Oh, I like um, Dr Dre and Notorious B.I.G. and um, Jay-Z and, yep. you know, all sorts of stuff like You've got that. the picture. Oh, yeah, I feel like picture. I'm kind of at a nightclub or something. Yeah. And, and I run, I feel like I'm going fast because I've got the music <laughs> in and then I you know, see myself in a shop window going... <laughs> <laughs> and people smile at me like they smile at old people. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> Like, good on you for, isn't it good? Isn't she's trying. Sweet. She's got the gear. <laughs> she's having a go, but nah. So, yeah, it just doesn't come naturally. Um, so, uh, you yoga, do you, do you do it at home then? Yes, on, on the you computer. Don't, you don't go on, on the computer? Mm. <laughs> on um, a downloaded. Your fingers are very strong. Yeah. <laughs> There's a guy called Rodney, does it in Hawaii, and he and I do it together, a downloaded um, one. I have to ask what your husband does when you're doing yoga on the computer. Um, he likes it. He does Does yoga. He He doesn't do it on the computer with me, but he goes to yoga and he does quite a lot and he's quite good at it. His dad was heavily into yoga, so, um, he, um... And that's really good for his temper and that kind of thing. (laughs) (laughs) You can cut that out. It's a work in progress. (laughs) (laughs) We don't have to run that. That's all right. Um, Everybody knows. (laughs) Diets. Um, I have to go to you, um, Karen, first of all. There's a lot of talk around at the moment about a couple of diets. One's paleo and the other's a 5-2. Um, tell us what you think about diet generally, dieting generally, and uh, what sort of diets would you recommend versus the sorts that are, are particularly popular at the moment? Well, I think we have to be very careful about embracing every fad diet that comes along and really look at the nutritional quality and what that will mean to a person's energy level and their long-term health. If somebody's having a a, a go at a fad diet that they're only going to do for a few weeks, the benefit of that is to become mindful about what they eat. They actually think about what they eat and that facilitates change. Provided the change is to a very nutritionally sound, good habits diet. The things that I worry about are the fad diets where people cut out entire food groups and then sometime down the track they realise that they've got no energy or they've got some other health problem that's related to this weird funky diet that they've been following. Now, I've seen a lot of these come and go over the years and there are some people, for example, who go on the no-carb diet and then they drag themselves into my general practice and sit there and go, I can't understand why I haven't got any energy. You say, well, let's go through your diet and there's not a carb to be seen. Well, of course, carbohydrates are where you draw your energy from. And so I think that you need to be careful about what it is that you're actually doing to your body when you're taking on a diet, because we literally are what we eat. And uh, so, so paleo. Well, I mean, it's huge. Yes, it is huge. It, it really doesn't suit everybody, and it doesn't suit everybody long term. And I think if people are cutting all grains out of their diet, for example, then they need to be very careful that they are replacing what they're missing, which you can't always do with other foods or supplements. The 5-2 diet's a bit of a, an exception because that, that one's around at the moment and there is a growing body of scientific evidence to show that it does actually have a beneficial effect on some of the biochemical parameters like blood sugar levels and blood cholesterol levels. And I do meet people who have lost significant amounts of weight, who wanted to lose weight on the diet. Layla McKinnon, it's um, well known that you um, fought really hard to have the two children that you've got. So did diet come into your life then, when you, when you were um, desperately trying to fall pregnant? Yes, it did, because I was having a lot of trouble with my food intolerances, mm-hmm. and also I was very sick with this parasite. And I actually went to Karen's daughter. Oh. And, and spoke to her about my diet and um, she was very helpful and I've managed to sort of get it all under control. But, uh, yeah, I, I think that um, going through IVF and, and trying to have a child really... Uh, and even being pregnant points out a lot of underlying health concerns 
that you don't think about when you're just going about your life. So I've come out of it more healthy than I think I've ever been. The other subject that I think is really interesting at the moment is um, fitness and wellness at um, the other end of your life, you know, later in life. Uh, it seems to me that uh, the older we get um, these days, the fitter and healthier we get. Karen, are you seeing that in, in your practice, that um, age is not what it used to be, that you can have a 70-year-old woman who uh, is incredibly active and incredibly fit and doesn't even look 70 anymore? I think a lot depends on how well somebody treats themselves in their younger years. And I quite often have this conversation with people when they're 50, 60, and... I'm concerned about lifestyle factors. If somebody's smoking, for example, which is fortunately becoming a bit of a rarity these days, if someone's drinking too much alcohol, if they are overweight, if they are very unfit, then I will have the conversation with them that if we can take control of these things now at 40, 50, 60 or whatever age I do the intervention, um, <laughs> then you'll be so much better when you're 60, 70, 80. So the habits that we take on as adults, even if you haven't led the healthiest life possible even up to that point, will determine to a large extent how much you enjoy your older years. Because you, you can't you... really enjoy your older years to the fullest extent if you're not healthy. But are you noticing that um, that has actually happening, that women have taken control of their fitness and in the past may never have imagined taking up running or skiing or you know climbing Mount Everest in their 50s and 60s and now they are doing it that, that age has changed are you seeing that in your practice there's no question that women are taking on physical challenges that they wouldn't have taken on a few decades ago and you're quite right the age limit for this doesn't seem to exist it really is about what's going on in in your mind and how you feel about yourself in facing those challenges. Do you think any of it has something to do with the fact that women now are having children when they're 40 and all the way through to 50, as in the case of um, Sonia Kruger, your, co your colleague? That's got to change the whole thinking about ageing as well, doesn't it? If you've got a, a baby in your house and you're 45, um, you're not going to think of yourself old, mainly because you can't afford to think of yourself <laughs> as old. Kids certainly keep you young. They do. They I noticed that with my husband. He, as soon as we had children and he was 47, um, he started taking his health mm -hmm. and fitness a lot more seriously right. as well. But, you know, so mm. I think it works both ways. And my, uh, uh, talking about older people, my 79-year-old mother-in-law just got a personal trainer at a gym Did in you? town and it started working that's out. That's fantastic. See, that's, I'm hearing a lot mm. of that. Mm. And that is extraordinary, isn't it? What advice, Karen, do you have for um, any women that are watching this now in their 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s um, about their fitness? If you are wanting to have a healthier and happier older age, I think people need to do what I call in my book an audit of where they are now and what their strengths are and their challenges are and then work out what they can do in a practical sense to get better health and greater fitness. Karen Phelps, what makes you happy? Having a strong, supportive relationship makes me happy. Uh, seeing my children grow into good citizens and great people, good professionals, that makes me happy. And uh, having good friends. Layla McKinnon, what does success look like for you? I think I would consider myself very successful if I can stay interested, keep learning, be curious all my life. Uh, I really admire people that don't shut down as they get older and ultimately if I die comfortably of old age, knowing my children are healthy and happy, that'll do me. Done. Layla McKinnon, Dr Karen Phelps, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.